know, Ford has recently debuted their 2015 Ford Mustang. A lot of people love it, a lot of people hate it. So with that being said, we thought we'd bring back the classics. We're going to compare and contrast the 2014 Shelby GT500 up against the 2014 Roush Stage 3. My name is Mitchell Watson. Welcome to Town & Country TV. First up, let's take a walk around the 2014 Shelby GT500. This is the car that most people would expect to be one of their favorites. You know, the Shelby GT500 is synonymous with racing and racing history, and so I want to concentrate on this one first. You'll notice that the cars are both based off a very similar chassis, but the front end is very different. You'll notice that the grille is wide open on the Shelby GT500. And what they actually had to do is they had to reinvent this entire front end of the car, and the reason for that was for aerodynamics. This car is actually designed and built to do 200 miles an hour right out of the box. That is something that the Roush simply is not set up to do. All right, as we kind of walk around to the side, you'll see on the front, uh, you actually have uh, the uh, heat extractors are in a slightly different place from the Roush Stage 3. The Roush Stage 3 actually has a hood based off of the Mustang GT. You'll notice that this car does have the SVT track pack, and you'll see that it has your custom multi-spoke wheels here that are dark in color that, can, that matches this paint on the uh, Shelby GT500 pretty well. The color of this vehicle is called Sterling Gray, and uh, you'll notice that it has an MSRP of $64,000. $55. Now obviously because this is a Shelby GT500 it does not have any rebates on this car nor do I think it ever will and there's nothing wrong with that it's just a very special uh, specialty piece. Now as we walk around you'll see that the wheels and the tires are actually a staggered set. These are 19's excuse me 20's in the rear and 19's in the front and so that's another thing that you have to think about on the GT500 because it's a staggered set of wheels and tires you can't necessarily rotate the tires like you can on the Roush Stage 3, whereas the Roush has 20s all the way around. You'll notice on the back end, you'll notice that the badging is pretty predominant on Shelby, and you also have the Cobra logo right here, but one of the things that you'll notice is the aesthetics of the exhaust system. You'll notice this exhaust system has a four-tipped exhaust exit, and so you actually have two mufflers, one on each side, and each of them have a, uh, an exhaust on, uh, on both sides. So you do have a different setup on the exhaust system here versus the Roush. This exhaust system is, is a whole lot, um, it's not nearly as loud as the Roush Stage 3. In fact, let's go ahead and listen to and hear what that sounds like. Next, let's take a look at exactly what the Roush Stage 3's exhaust compared to the GT500. This is the square tipped exhaust system that you get from Roush. Now, the only bad part about this exhaust system is it's not necessarily 50 state legal. The way that, Ford, that Roush uh, sends these cars to is they actually have the Ford factory kit uh, exhaust on there. And because of some of the people in California, the lawmakers, uh, you actually have to have this stuff done uh, post title, meaning that the uh, dealership themselves actually needs to be the one to, uh, to install the exhaust system. Let's go ahead and listen to that right now. driving the Roush Stage 3. This car is absolutely so much fun to drive. As you just saw in the GT500, the clutch is a lot stiffer, it has a whole lot more horsepower, and it's a lot more brutal to drive on a daily basis. I really like the Roush. Other than the extreme loudness of the exhaust, this is a very drivable vehicle, something you can drive every day. And I don't know how well you can hear it, but on the Roush Stage 3 at interstate speeds, the car is pretty well loud. I mean, it doesn't have as much drone as some of the louder exhausts have, but it's definitely not a quiet ride. The Shelby has 662 horsepower with 24 miles per gallon. The Roush has 575 horsepower with only 22 miles per gallon. 
Now that we've heard the exhaust, let's take a look at the brakes. You know, well, one thing you have to think about is not just the power, how much power can you put out, but you also have to stop whatever kind of power you're going to put to it. Now, first off, let's take a look at the Roush Stage 3. Now, you'll notice that the Roush Stage 3 does come with a set of Brembo brakes, depending on how your vehicle is equipped. You'll notice that you uh, these Brembo brakes are just fine for you know pretty much any uh, type of use. The Roush does offer the ability to upgrade it to two different um, uh, brake kits. You actually have the sport brake and then you also have the big brake kit. This one is actually equipped with the factory GT brakes which can leave uh, a little bit to uh uh, a little bit to be desired. Now let's come over and take a look at the Shelby GT500. When you compare these two rotors, I actually never realized quite how much bigger the rotors are on the Shelby GT500 versus the uh, Roush Stage 3, which is the same brakes as the uh, Mustang GT. You'll notice you do have brake calipers from Brembo as well. Um, I have uh, heard a couple people talking about brake fade and things like that on the Shelby GT500, and you know I I've not had the ability to take one of these cars, uh, either one of these cars, actually to the track so if you have one of these cars please make sure to comment uh, below the video and let us know what you think do you experience the kind of brake fade that you, that some people have been uh, complaining about and if so what have you done about it the Shelby GT500 has a 0 to 60 time of about 3.5 seconds now that's assuming you can actually get all of this power to the ground without spinning the tires you can probably get the hint that I like the handling and components of the Roush Stage 3 a little bit more than the GT500. One of the things that the GT500 has over the Roush is the engine and transmission. This car is actually geared to go 62 miles an hour in first gear, which is one of the reasons that the 0-60 to 60 time is so much less than the Roush Stage 3. In my opinion, the GT500 is a better straight line vehicle drag strips and things like that. The Roush Stage 3, however, I believe is a much better road track vehicle. Handling, things like that. And that's the reason the 0-60 to 60 on the Roush Stage 3 is about 4 seconds and it's much easier to get traction being that it has a little bit less horsepower than the Shelby. Now a few minutes ago we actually talked about the window sticker on the Shelby GT500, $64,000. The way that the Roush is built, it actually starts life out as a Mustang GT and it's converted in Livonia, Michigan by Jack Roush and his team at Roush Performance. You'll notice that the factory window sticker happens to do with the Mustang GT. The Mustang GT, you actually have a base MSRP, the total MSRP of 38290 and you can see that the fuel mileage ratings here are not accurate, so full Roush has actually added an addendum uh, where you get 14 and 22 uh, city and highway fuel economy. But what you have to look at is this is the Roush uh, performance upgrade package. This is the total MSRP. And so you can see all of the different features that were added at Roush performance. And then you can also see the final MSRP of 61,280. Now a lot of people just look and compare those two prices and say, well, uh, hey, you, you have 61 versus 64. I might go with the GT500 because it's so close. What you also are not factoring in is because this vehicle is based as a Mustang GT. The chassis started as a GT. As far as Ford Motor Credit goes, excuse me, Ford Motor Company comes, you can actually qualify for specific rebates and depending on where you live, it's going to be a little bit different. So you actually have this price minus the rebates. And so that actually does differentiate the price on the vehicles to just a little bit. One of the things I like about the Roush versus the Shelby GT500, the Shelby you can get in some nice color combinations, but this car is completely customizable. You can get every color that comes on a Mustang GT is the paint, and then on top of that you can even customize each one of these colors, like the color of the stripe on the hood. You can customize the colors right here on the side that have the RS3 that stands for Roush Stage 3, and then you can even customize that side accent stripe as well. It's really nice because you can have your own personal touch delivered right from Roush Performance. One of the things I absolutely love about the Roush Stage 3 is the suspension system. As you can see, this car includes brand new shocks, it includes brand new struts, and lots of different things that have been changed out on the suspension system. The net result is this car will pull well over 1G on a skid pad. You can actually compare that to the 2005-2006 Ford GT Supercar. This car with the proper wheel and tire combination will outhandle that mid-engine rear-wheel drive supercar. The Roush Mustang, once again, is based off of a Mustang GT. 
This particular vehicle happens to have the leather that came from the factory from Ford Motor Company. And so you can see there's really not anything special with the leather. You do have the option to upgrade that, but this car simply does not have that option. Now, this car does come equipped with the sync system that's powered by Microsoft. And you do have some nice touches from Roush uh, Performance that kind of really helps separate this vehicle. Like you do have this uh, Roush in, uh, logo that has the Roush Stage 3. You also have over here to the side the Jack Roush, the sticker that uh, happens to have his signature on it and then you also have some really nice uh, buttons kind of like this right here that kind of just set the car up uh, to be a little bit different from a normal Mustang GT. In addition to that, you also happen to have a different instrument cluster, which has a nice, almost a brushed aluminum look to it, and that also works out pretty well with the Roush boost gauge, which that's pretty neat because it actually works inside of the air conditioner vent on the driver's side. The only problem that I found with that is you can't dim that specific boost gauge like you can in conjunction with the rest of the vehicle, which could necessarily blind you in the middle of the night if you're driving this car. And now we're in the Shelby. This car is absolutely awesome on the inside. The first thing you'll notice that these Shelby, uh, Shelby seats happen to have the embroidery of the Cobra logo right there. And this these seats are really nice because they actually feature a little bit of a suede right here on the accents, which work really nice and look really nice when conjunction with the black solid black leather. Now you can get this leather to have some stripes in them if you want to. I particularly like the solid color and uh, the way that this steering wheel is also a lot nicer than the Roush Stage 3. You also have the suede right there on the handles of where exactly you would put your hand when you're driving the car, which really, really looks nice. Once again, just like in the Roush, you do have some accents that come across the car that really do look nice, like the Cobra logo right here, and then also the Shelby logo right here. So some really neat features on both of these cars. Um, I do have to say that I give the win for the interior to the Shelby GT500. But what I will tell you though, is that this car is much harder to drive as a daily driver. The clutch, because the entire drivetrain is completely different from a Mustang GT and the Roush Stage 3, the clutch is much harder to push in. And so if you do a lot of daily driving and some stop and go traffic, I would recommend that you not look at the GT500 because it will make sure that your left calf is a lot bigger than your right calf. But overall, it's a fun car to drive, but it's not something that I would enjoy driving every Every single day. If I had to choose a daily driver, I would choose the Roush Stage 3. The Shelby GT500 and the Roush Stage 3, they both have really nice track apps. Now you are going to have some small differences like this particular vehicle. The Shelby happens to have a launch control which is not available in the current Mustang GT. Rumor has a 2015 Mustang GT is picking up that launch control. Now this car also happens to have a uh, adjustable ride with the uh, Sport on the Bilstein electronic shocks which is really nice. You can change it from normal to Sport. Another nice thing about the Shelby GT500 is the adjustable ride on the steering wheel. All you have to do is hit this quick little button and from here you can actually change it from comfort to sport um, and then to the standard uh, steering which is really really a nice feature when you decide you how you want to drive the vehicle on a daily basis or if you're out to the uh, racetrack. So here we are with the Shelby GT500. Now this may sound kind of petty but one thing I don't like about the Shelby is this right here. You buy a $64,000 vehicle and you have a hood prop, whereas with the Roush Stage 3, you do have hood struts that are actually designed and installed by Roush Performance. Now let's talk about the engines. This one is based off of a 5.0 V8, and what it has, this is the twin independent variable cam timing uh, engine. Now what that basically means is that, um, kind of like if you ever went to the drag strip, uh, if you've got a car that you want for extra horsepower but not really concerned about the fuel mileage, you might swap the cams out. Well this one actually has an adjustable cam. It's twin independent variable cam timing. And so depending on how you are driving the car, the cams will actually automatically adjust to provide for fuel economy or for raw power and everything in between. Now this car is actually mated with a TVS 2300 supercharger on top of the 5.0 and that is how you make the 575 horsepower which is, has 505 pound-feet of torque and as you can see it's proudly built in the USA. Each one of these engines are hand converted by a technician at Roush Performance in Livonia, Michigan and you can see that it was custom built by whoever stamped their name on the plaque right there. Now 
Now the nice part about this system right here is you actually have the ability to customize it and tweak how the supercharger works. You have a phase one, a phase two, and a phase three that can get you up to 700 horsepower on this particular engine. And you also have an illuminator package that's optional on the Roush stage three as well. And so you have a lot of different options and equipment here, um, which when you compare that to the Shelby GT500 is pretty much you get what you get. And as you can see, it also has a massive supercharger on top. And this one actually makes 662 horsepower. The power options on this are pretty limited. You have what you have right here. Now you can obviously swap out some superchargers, maybe a Kenny Bell or um, all different types of superchargers, turbochargers, whatever you want to here, but your options as far as what will be covered under warranty are very limited right here. Um, that is with maybe changing the superchargers out. Now as with the Roush, the, these engines are also built in America and when you come around to the side you can actually see where they were built uh, on the assembly line. They were actually hand built with pride on the niche line of the Romeo engine plant. And so you can see both cars have some serious nostalgia as far as some pride in going into converting both of these cars into making them what they are. And so you can see that this one has more raw power. This one has a little bit more finesse as far as, you know, engine to horsepower ratios. Uh, I would have to say that if I'm going for a weekend driver and I want a lot of extra horsepower and I want the nostalgia of the Shelby, I'd probably go with this car. Now, if what you're looking for is a loud in-your-face car, meaning that when you drive through the neighborhood, you want everybody to know what you have and that you paid for it, I'd probably go with the Roush because that exhaust, as you heard a little bit earlier, is absolutely phenomenal. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Once again, my name is Mitchell Watts with Town & Country Ford, uh, Town & Country TV. And if you will, please leave us some comments below and let us know which one you would pick. If it was your money, which one would you get? And if you have one of these cars, we'd really like to hear from you and let, let us know what you think about the car and why you chose the car that you did because these are two very comparable vehicles. Once again, thank you for your time and have a blessed day.